Hi everybody, this is Melanie back again with Lost and Found and I am here today, today's day two of my five day series talking all about your booth or your vendor business and why you may not be making the money that you wanna make. You wanna see your sales more profitable, your sales higher, you wanna feel like you're walking away with more money in your pocket and maybe it's not going the way that you've wanted it to go or maybe you've heard from people, hey, there's really no way to make any money in that business. I'm here to tell you today that that is not true, that you can make money in this business and I'm walking through five reasons why you may not be seeing that though. So hi Lori, thank you for joining us. So I'm outside Dallas, Texas and uh, would love to hear where you guys are watching from today. Give me a shout out, let me know where you're watching from. So if you missed reason number one, you can go back and watch that. We did that Monday. And that was basically all about location. That you may not be seeing the sales you wanna see because you're in the wrong location. And we kind of broke that down and talked about what that meant for you specifically and how to evaluate what a good location would be and how that really can make or break your business, okay? So we're gonna move on now to reason number two and that has to do with your inventory. And again, all of these things um, kind of go together, all right? So um, they all play in a little bit differently to your success for your business. But reason number two is you might be selling in your booth what you like rather than what your customers like, okay? Um, you may be seeing your booth as kind of an extension of your personal shopping and going to flea markets and estate sales and collecting the things that you personally love but that maybe aren't right for your customer base, okay? Um, and that can be a hard thing to admit to yourself and kind of a hard thing to evaluate. So, and I always tell people, you know, I do teach in my Booth Seller Bootcamp to, to go with your gut and, you know, when I was first starting out, I sold things that I liked. I sold the things that appealed to me. And that really was how I started. And I don't think that's a bad thing to do. Um, but I think if you're not seeing the kind of sales that you wanna see, if you have inventory that's been sitting around for more than six months, then it may be worth evaluating. This may not be what my customers like. It may be what I like, but it may not be what my customers like, okay? Um, so case in point. Here's, here's a little story to illustrate that. I'm a furniture painter. That's a big part of about what I do. That's what I've always done, okay? Um, I have two booth spaces now. My first one, my flagship space, has always been filled with um, furniture that I would go buy secondhand that was usually not in great shape that I could get for cheap and I would fix it up, I would paint it, and then the rest of my booth was stuff that I found at the flea market, like vintage decor finds. Not new wholesale stuff, not new stuff, stuff that I was buying that was old, rusty junk, you know, decorative junk is what I call it. And that did well for me for a long time, um, until about six months ago. And I started noticing that in this location, my painted furniture is just not selling as well. It's just not. And what I'm seeing selling around me is there's a move back towards more natural stained wood furniture. So that was a little hard for me to kind of admit to myself. I'm a painter, that's what I do. I sell furniture paint. But my painted pieces were just taking a lot longer to move. So I didn't take them out of my booth, but I started putting in my booth just plain wood pieces. Okay, pieces that I found um, that still fit my brand, they were still kind of rustic, but I just left them as they were. And guess what? They've been selling. Okay, so I had to just kind of admit to myself, like, I need to incorporate some more of this in my space. I love this painted furniture, but right here in this market, it's starting to shift a little bit. And if you're gonna treat your business like a business and not like your own personal hobby or shopping, you've got to make sure that you're selling what your customers want and not just what you want. So I had to make that shift a little bit, okay? Now, that's in this space up here. Now in my other space down here, what's really interesting is that, and, and they're just 
you know, they're about 20 minutes apart from each other, two different suburbs of Dallas, okay? This one up here, they're not liking painted stuff so much. They're wanting more natural wood. This one down here, my painted stuff is flying out the door. It's flying out the door. I can't keep it there. And when I opened this location down here, I did the same thing that I did at this location. Painted furniture and vintage junk, stuff that I was buying at the flea market. Well, my painted furniture was selling down here, but nobody was buying my vintage found decor. They weren't buying that. The rest of the vendors in this little store had new wholesale things, signs, um, trinkets, tea towels, stuff that you buy um, at market and then resell, not stuff that I was finding at the flea market. So I had to stop, like while my painted furniture down here at this location was selling, I had to stop selling my flea market finds because they weren't being bought there. And I had to start buying new market items to put down here. Okay, now the new market things don't sell up here, but they sell down here. My painted furniture doesn't sell up here, but it sells down here, right? So you've got to pay attention to your specific location. What is working for you? The customers that shop where you are, what are they buying? What do they want, okay? You can't just look at what's popular on Pinterest or what's popular on Instagram, or what your friend who's at this mall over across town says is selling for her, because it may not work for you. It may not be the thing that is that you need at your specific location. You've got to tailor what you're selling to your customers and your customer base there, and you've got to start asking yourself that question. Is this just what I like, or is this also what my customers like? And, you know, still, going with your gut, sticking with your brand, but being honest that sometimes the market changes and sometimes what you really love, your customers don't love. So this can also happen just kind of on like a smaller cycle. I mean, I've gone through seasons where mirrors were selling really well for a while and I would buy every mirror I saw and then they just stopped selling. And so it, it took me a couple months to figure out, oh, these aren't selling anymore. <laughs> I need to stop buying them when I go to the flea market, right? Um, and then they kind of picked back up again. So there can be cycles like this, but you've got to pay attention to the things that are going out the door. So, um, you know, one of my spaces has required work days. And when I'm at that required work day, I really pay attention at what the customers are buying. I kind of watch what goes through the sales line, what people are picking up to buy. And that tells me um, what's wanted and what's trending at that location, okay? If, so if you have a work day at your mall, use that as your time to see in action what customers are buying. And if you don't have a work day at your mall, try to go up there and hang out up there anyway for a certain chunk of time you know, volunteer to work up there or just ask, say, hey, can I kind of watch and see what's what's being sold here? What's buying? Or ask the people that are running the register, what's selling? What do you see that's selling? And you want to tailor your inventory towards the things that are selling. Now, that doesn't mean every single thing in your booth. You know, this space up here, I did not remove every single piece of painted furniture. There's still some there and it does sell. It's just taking longer. It's taking longer and my natural wood things are selling like this, okay? So I'm staying true to who I am, but I'm paying attention to what the market is asking for me, okay? Um, that's thinking about your booth like a business rather than thinking about it like a hobby. And that's one of the, the biggest kind of mental adjustments that you need to make if you're not seeing your sales where you wanna see them if you're not seeing the return that you want to see them, is asking yourself, okay, am I treating this like a hobby or am I treating it like a business? Because you can't expect to see business level income from something that you're doing as a hobby, right? You can have hobby level income, but you're not gonna see business level income unless you're really thinking strategically like a business, okay? What do my customers want? What is trending right now in this space? 
not what's trending on Pinterest or what's trending, you know, two cities away from me or not the new hot look that I love or the style that I personally love, but what do my customers love, okay? One of the most successful vendors in uh, one of my locations, they have a huge space and they are very, very successful and they sell really rusty, crusty, dirty junk. I mean, and I say junk lovingly, I hope you know that, like decorative junk, but it is rusty and you know chippy, super peely paint, and they sell a lot of it, and they do really well. And I was asking them, and I was so shocked, like I was assuming that because this is all the stuff they have in their booth, that their home is probably super primitive, all that same kind of stuff. And they actually told me, she said, we actually, our home is really modern. We personally, we really like modern decor. And I was like, whoa. And then this was early on in my career because I just assumed at that point, I was still just selling what I loved. Well, they were smart and they said, okay, we love modern decor. The mall where we're at has a strong primitive vibe. And so we're gonna sell primitives. They don't personally like primitives. They don't decorate themselves with chippy, rusty stuff, but they get that that's what's gonna sell. And so that's what they buy to sell. So thank you, Donna and Sandra and everybody else that's joining. And Sandra, I'm glad you're up at the mall today. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've got um, some just oak, some natural wood stuff up there right now. I actually sold an oak piece yesterday from my space. And then I'm gonna be bringing a painted piece in to fill in that hole today, but I've really been trying to do a little bit of both because I, I just see that natural wood is going more. So I want you to think about that. I want you to go through your inventory. I want you, if you're not keeping track of your inventory too, then you gotta do that too. You gotta pay attention to when you put something in your space and how long it's been sitting there. And if it's been there for more than six months and it's a certain style, I want you to ask yourself, does this need to go? Do I need to start letting go of this style of thing that I'm selling? Maybe it's not the right fit for my clientele, okay? I want you to do a little bit of research. I want you to walk around your mall and look at what's selling. Look at you know, the top performing vendors in your space and look at what's in their space and what flies out the door. Make note of that, okay? Um, yes, you want to be true to yourself and your brand, and yes, you want to be unique, but you've got to pay attention to what is wanted in your market and, you know, more so than just what you personally like. So that's reason number two, okay? Reason number one is location, location, location. Reason number two is making sure you're selling not just what you like, but what your customers for your specific location want. And so those two things are really, really linked pretty closely together. Like I shared in my story, my two locations, even though they're 20 minutes apart from each other, have very, very different customer bases. And so I had to tweak a little bit what I sell at each one of those places to have the kind of sales that I really wanted to see. Okay. So we're going to come back on Friday and we're going to talk about reason number three on Friday, one o'clock central time on Friday. I'll be back here live. And then next Monday and Wednesday, we'll do reasons number four <laughs> and five. And so we'll round out our five reasons. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm always happy to try and answer questions. You can write them in the comments. I'll come back later and answer them if I can. Or you can ask when we come back on Friday. And then next Thursday is when my online booth seller bootcamp course opens. And so if you are wanting to really dive in deeper to these topics, then I hope you join us for that. So this course is only open twice a year. Um, we opened it in October of last year. It's open again now. We've got a fantastic waiting list going for it. And this is if you, if, if you wanna learn to go from hobby to business. If you wanna treat your booth like a business, you wanna know how to start it off right, you wanna know how to work smarter, not harder, how to be strategic, how to really make sure that you um, are being smart about what you're doing, and, and how, how to know that you, to see the sales that you wanna see and how to set yourself up um, as this great foundation of a booth business that you can really expand and grow from. So we go through all of that in the four weeks of boot camp, and it's all online. The videos are delivered right to your email inbox and you have access to them for a lifetime. So you can watch them, you know, go through the course along with us 
If you have a week that's super busy and you can't get to it, no big deal, you can go back and watch them later. And with that, you also get access to our private Booth Seller Bootcamp Facebook group where we do a weekly live coaching call like this where I'm there answering your questions and where you can post just feedback for the group or ask questions for the group. That's a great group. Um, all the folks that have been in the last two sessions of boot camp are still in that group and they're posting every day and asking questions and giving feedback. And so that's a great community to be a part of and you get that along with the purchase of your course. So the door's open for that next Thursday. We're gonna keep talking about it and we're gonna keep talking about our last three reasons for why you may not be seeing the sales you wanna see. And hopefully um, making some of these tweaks, you know, tweaking one or two of these things, making some intentional changes with how you're doing your business, you'll start to see a difference because yes, having a booth business is fun. It's, I love shopping and buying things and turning around and selling things. But from day one, I wanted to make some money at it, right? I didn't want it to be a glorified storage unit <laughs> where I'm just basically paying for storage to just stick stuff in my space. I want things to sell because I want it to be a blessing to my family, right? I want to use um, the profit from my business to do fun things with my family, to take us on vacations, to help um, you know, provide some of our uh, retirement savings to replace the windows in our kitchen, whatever, all things that I've done. I really want my booth business to bless my family and I want yours to bless your family too. And I wanna help you do that. That's why we're going through these series. That's why I put together my boot camp. So I'm gonna sign off for today. I will see you guys back here on Friday, one o'clock central time for reason number three, we'll keep on going. So thank you so much, everybody who joined today. I always appreciate you taking the time. If you have friends that are booth or vendor friends, please hit the little share button and share this video with them. Invite them to join us. Invite them to be a part of this conversation so we can maybe help them become more profitable too, okay? You guys are great. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you back on Friday. Bye-bye.